Hi, and welcome to this video series on how to use a BLE sniffer. Specifically, we'll be looking at the TI BLE sniffer, which runs on the CC2540 USB dongle. Now, there are a few options out there for sniffers, and if you're interested in learning more about them, check out my previous blog post where I compare the different sniffers out there in the market. I'll also add a link in the description below. In the first video, I'll be focusing on the advertisement data. This is the data that is broadcasted by a BLE peripheral device and can be discovered by any BLE central device. Now in my setup, I have a few BLE devices in the vicinity, so we can go through a live demo running the sniffer and show how to discover these devices. Now first, let's launch the TI Packet software, the P TI Packet sniffer software. Um, I'll also provide a link in the description below so you can download it if you haven't already. You'll want to make sure that you start with a new capture. So if you have anything on it showing up on your screen, just click the blank document button and that should reset it. Next, we navigate to the capturing device and make sure that the CC2540 USB dongle is selected. The next step we want to do is go to the radio configuration tab. And this is where we choose the advertising channel on which we want to listen. Now usually peripheral devices will cycle through the three advertisement channels, so you're pretty much guaranteed to catch any device in the area that is advertising. The one major limitation with this sniffer and pretty much all the other sniffers in the same price range, the lower price range, is that it can only scan one advertisement channel at a time. Now this does not cause a big problem when looking at advertisements, since most devices will cycle between the three channels. However, it becomes an issue when following connections, which can get initiated on a channel other than the one being scanned, in which case the sniffer will not be able to follow that connection. So let's go ahead and choose channel 37. And we want next we want to press the play button to in order to start capturing. Now I, what I would like what I like to do is hit the auto scroll that way I can see the data coming in in uh, near real time. And once you've captured a few seconds of data, you can go ahead and hit the pause button, which will actually stop. Um, after you hit the pause button, it's a good idea to disable the automatic scrolling since that really um, it interferes with the scrolling while you're viewing the data so you won't have uh, unexpected behavior. Now let's look at the packets and understand what each part means. First you'll see a packet number, which is really the sequence of the packets received by the sniffer. So it, it goes from 0 or 1 all the way to the number of packets that were received by the sniffer. Now next to that you'll see a timestamp, and that is in microseconds. You'll see two, two values basically. One is the one is the time um, offset from from the previous packet received, and the other one is the absolute time. So in this case, we have zero and zero on the beginning, and then the next one what came in at ninety four thousand eight hundred and seventy microseconds. Now this is useful, obviously, for looking at the difference in the time difference between the packets that were captured. The third element, which shows up in light blue, is the channel number, and that is in hex. So this corresponds to 37, which is the channel we chose. The next value is the access address. Now the access address always has the same value for the advertisement packets, and that's according to the Bluetooth spec. And this value is 8E89BED6. However, for other packets, other than advertising, such as connection and data packets, uh, those, this access address will differ. If we look at the next element, which is the advertisement PDU type, we'll see a value or an enum value, basically. It's advertisement IND, and this changes based on the, the type of advertisement packet that is being received. The next, we're going to look at the advertisement PDU header. Um, the first element in that is the type. Uh, we have TX add, RX add, and PDU length. The type is basically the value of this PDU, the advertisement PDU type. So zero corresponds to advertised IND. And then we have other types, um, which include advertisement direct IND, which is a connectable directed advertisement, which can be connected to by one specific central. Um, in the case of advertisement IND, it is connectable. It's undirected. 
which means it can be connected by any BLE central device. We also have a third type, um, non-connectable advertisement, and that is an undirected advertisement as well, which means it cannot be connected to um, and cannot even respond to a scan request. Oh, there's also a scan request, which has a value of three, and that is sent by the central device requesting a scan response. Usually this is a way to send, uh, to, to query, to get more data from the peripheral device that is, uh, then is available in the advertisement data. So in, in response to that scan request, uh, you'll find a type of scan response, and that has a value of four, which will show up in the type. And this scan response is the packet containing that additional information sent by the peripheral in response to the scan request. The fifth type that we have, or the sixth type, is the connection re connect request packet. And that's a connection request packet that is sent by the central device to connect to a specific peripheral device. The last type, the seventh type, is the advertisement scan IND, which is a scannable undirected advertisement, which means it cannot be connected to, however it can respond to a scan request. Next we have the TX add value, and that is a, a value, uh, it takes a value of 0 or 1, uh, 0 means public and zero and 1 meaning random, and this is to, sh to tell you what, uh, whether the address of the transmitter of this packet um, is a public address or a random address. So we said zero for public and one for random. In this case, it is a public address. Now, for example, this, this shows up in uh, for the advertisement IND, advertisement direct IND, advertisement non-connect IND, scan response, and advertisement scan IND, it refers to the advertiser's address, whereas it would refer to the initiator's address or the central device in the case of a scan request or a connect request, since those packets are sent by the central device. The RX add is pretty much the opposite of the TX add. However, it only applies in certain situations. It exists for the types advertisement direct IND and scan request and connect, connect requests, since for the other types the initiator role does not apply or the receiver role does not apply. The next one is the PDU length, and this is the length of the PDU which includes the data following the header. In this case it includes six bytes for the advertisement address and the rest for the advertisement data. In this case we see it has 36, six bytes go here and 30 bytes go for the rest which, include, which are in the advertisement data. Let's look at the next element. The next element is the advertising address, and this is a, an address that is unique per device. And the most important part of the advertisement packet is the advertisement data, which comes next. Now, the advertisement data contains the individual bytes being advertised by the peripheral device, or the central device in the case where the central device sent a packet. So we'll Unfortunately, in this TI sniffer software, it does not translate this data into a human readable format, so you'll have to figure out on your own what the data means. For example, this data could contain the advertisement name or the name of the device, but you'll have to translate the bytes from hex into ASCII uh, in order to figure out what the text that was being transmitted. It definitely would have been nice to have the tool automatically parse this data since the types are actually standardized per the Bluetooth spec and could be done by the software. Um, the next element we have is the CRC, and this is the CRC value that is computed for the data transmitted, and it is also calculated by the transmitter device. Now what the sniffer does is take the CRC um, and compare it to the CRC calculated on the received data and make sure that they both are the same, and that's what corresponds to the FCS value. The FCS stands for frame check sequence and it indicates whether the, the CRC calculated by the software or the sniffer matches the CRC that was transmitted by the BLE device under test. The RSSI is the signal strength, the received signal strength as reported by the BLE sniffer transceiver. Now that we have a better understanding of the advertisement data in the advertisement packets, Let's, look a, let's take a look at how to use the display filter, which is an important feature of the software. Now here you see there's a field name, and based on that field name, you can assign values that it will filter for. 
So for example, if we want to look for devices that have a specific address in the advertisement address uh, for a specific advertisement PDU type of, for example, ADV IND or advertisement non uh, undirected, we'll choose ADV IND advertisement address and click on the first to add it. Now you'll have to delete this and actually enter the hex address for the advertisement address and make sure you type it in uppercase otherwise it will not accept it or it will filter for lowercase which will not match any of the ones displayed above. So let's go ahead and for example take this device that is uh, being captured. Let's do C869 CD4 0D a 94 let's click add and apply the filter and you'll see that it was it will show the advertisement packets that were received by this advertisement address let's go ahead and turn off that filter since that one were not received there were not many packets received by that you'll see that some of them had errors so let's go ahead and filter for a device that didn't have any errors just to see. So let's take this one for example, 000B570CC2B88. Let's add that, remove the, uh, the previous one, and apply the filter. So here you can see that it filtered only for the advertisements that were sent by this advertisement address. And this is very helpful in looking at the different packets. For example, you can see here that the packet sequence is not as missing uh, some packets, which means it actually filtered. Um, one important thing or one, one useful thing is to look at the time stamps for these packets that were filtered. And this will tell you the packet. You can look at the differences between time between these different packets and tell the advertisement interval. Now the, the difference, the, the offset is not really accurate since, for example, if you look at packet number 27, this offset is actually from packet 26 to 27, which won't be accurate in this case because the, the, the packets we are looking at are 27 and 15 that came from that same, from that specific device. Now you can also add other filters and filter for other types. So for example, if we want to see if there were any errors um, in the reception of these packets, so we can add FCC E, we'll add that and we'll say equals error. Let's add that, turn off the filter, apply the filter again. In this case, you'll see that there were the ones that include the FCE error, as well as the packets that were of that other advertisement data. Sometimes the software just has issues with the display, so you'll have to kind of refresh the screen to see the correct packets. So in this case, we'll see that the, the ones that has error will show up regardless of the advertisement address and the other ones that had OK will show up only for the advertisement address that we selected. Let's turn off the filter. These are just a few of the features of this uh, packet sniffing software. And so I'll be going over uh, some more detail in the next videos of the series. I hope you found this video useful. Um, if so, please don't forget to hit the like button and share with others who you may find who may find it interesting and useful. And be sure to also visit our blog at novelbits.io and subscribe to our newsletter to stay up to date on the latest posts re relating to BLE. In the next video, we'll go over how to follow connections between a central device and a peripheral device and look at the different packet information being displayed by the software. Until next time, thank you so much for watching.